you know, I'm, I'm Thomas Daffern and I'm here in various capacities. I'm pleased to welcome people to this. Really, it's the third meeting by European Council of Druids, um, Bards and Poets. And I moved to France in 2017 uh, in the chaos of Brexit aftermath. I've always felt myself a global citizen, a European, a, a British. I've lived in Scotland, Wales, England, London. Mm -hmm. I was born actually in Canada, so technically I'm, I'm also a Canadian passport holder. And to me, Druidry is a cosmic um, faith that transcends borders. Um, since I came here to Europe, I've been researching for three years virtually a three-volume encyclopedia of Druid studies, finding out all the details of the ancient Celts of the whole of Europe, in Italy, in Austria, in Switzerland, in Gaul here, France, Archaeologists have made incredible discoveries in the last, well, 40 years. Actually, since the 19th century, when Celtic studies really right. developed. Um, and we now know a huge amount about the Celts throughout Europe. So it seems to me ridiculous not to be proud of that heritage. It's pre-Roman. It's before the Roman uh, Republic and Empire decided to take over the whole of Europe. No, we were a proud, independent people, each with our own tribes, cultures, and druids. So since I was the druid uh, peace officer for the Council of British Druid Orders for some years now, I felt um, we should have a, you know, a European-wide council, and I would try and contact any druids, you know, functioning in Europe. And fortunately, there are quite a few. There's some in Austria, Spain, Germany, Holland, Italy, um, you know, all over the place, Gaul. And um, some of them will be here online. You'll be meeting each other. Um, there's others that, um, I don't know, for various reasons, you know, uh, are not able to join us today, but they'll be able to watch this because we're going to record it. This is a public, um, you know, um, statement, okay, about... And, and what attracted me to Druidry, I just want to say, uh, is the peace witness. All the texts assert that the Druids were the people that mediated and that upheld the peace and justice of the tribes. If there was a problem, it was the Druid who would try and sort it out. They were the legal officers, in effect, before the lawyers took over. Now, what I love about that is that they had nothing written down. Can you imagine a legal system with nothing written down? It was all done by word of mouth, heart to heart. And it was done with spiritual seership. So the Druids were the people that could see Dharma. The word Druid etymologically means the seer of the Dharma, which is the Sanskrit word, which is so important in Buddhism, Jainism, and Hinduism, which I've studied in great detail. Um, Dharma is the cosmic truth. Now, all of us ought to be able to see the cosmic truth. In every religion, you know, that should be imprinted on our hearts. We should know not to lie, not to steal, not to cheat. We don't need it written down. So that's where the Druids were coming from. And that's why they were esteemed in their tribes and had the authority they had. If they didn't live up to it, um, I mean, that's why it took 20 years and more to train to be a Druid. It was to learn to, to stand by the Dharma, to stand by truth, whatever the cost. And they always try to mediate conflicts and, and resolve disputes. So I think we need that to be brought back. So I founded the Druid Order of Peace Poets uh, and Bards and, and in Britain. Um, and I've been the Peace Officer of the Council of British Druid Orders. And some of the disputes I've had to deal with over the years, they're very complex because people get into emotional conflict they get into arguments. Um, and I've dealt with interfaith disputes between religions. I run the only mediation service in the world that deals with <coughs> uh, for religions. Um, now, the problem is that in religious disputes, it's really like to the death because people's souls are on, you know, on the line. And if, and if, you know, you, you insult or somebody insults somebody else's God or ultimate belief system, they'll fight you to the death and beyond, you know. <laughs> One of the questions I'm actually working on metaphysically is whether, <coughs> whether disputes actually carry on life after life. Because as you know, Druids believe in reincarnation. All the evidence points to reincarnation. That's what the, the, all the Dharmic religions believe that. 
So what happens in between lives? Do you take on that? You, you still fighting even in the other worlds? I hope not. I, I hope there's a peace trade get between the lives to come back into this world as more peace loving. And, and certainly I'll be having a word with, you know, people uh, to organize that. I'd love to work with mediums and things that can see into these mysteries and find out what on earth's going. Seems to me there's people being allowed to incarnate now that are pretty violent. In <coughs> I think they are not having a proper training before they get here. To have a human life is an incredibly auspicious and benevolent thing. <coughs> I really respect the Buddhists. They really emphasize this. It's an amazing privilege to be here. And to waste it by abusing, killing, attacking, hitting, hurting other people is just very primitive. Uh, we need to, you know, raise the enlightenment quotient of the planet. Um, so that's why I wrote the Encyclopedia of Druid Studies and I've been dealing with interfaith disputes. Okay, so um, the Council of British Druid Orders, we'll be talking about that a bit later and I'll be joined by someone else from it. Um, but the... Um, you know, the order of peace poets. The other thing that I think is important is poetry and the bardic arts, music, the arts generally. The bards were very important in the Druid uh, world and they had equal status to the kings, you know. Um, I'm a poet. When I first discovered poetry at the age of 13, growing up in England, I decided um, at, as soon as I could to drop out of school and become a wandering poet. It seemed to me poetry is the real curriculum of humanity. Uh, what you're taught in schools is disjointed so-called objectivity, which, which actually has no value apart from in a cutthroat capitalist market oriented world, uh, which didn't appeal to me. So I became a dissident. I discovered the romantic poets and I, I modeled myself on a mixture of Shelley and Keats and Byron and took off around um, Britain on, uh, you know, in the days when you could hitchhike with a rucksack. And I went and did archeological digs in Cornwall, discovered a, um, helped dig out an old Cornish prince's lair in Cornwall and wrote lots of poetry. And to me, that was my um, philosophical, you know, statement about humanity. I didn't realize that to be a poet was a, a lifelong craft and that it wasn't the end of the game. When I discovered Robert Graves, The White Goddess, uh, at about the age of 17, 18, I realized, you know, hey, this is, this is my calling. By then I discovered the goddess, I put a name to, to you know, the goal of wisdom. And um, so poetry has been very important to me. I've written over a thousand poems. If there's time, I'll share a few with you later. Um, but what interests me about poetry is it tells the truth in a way that prose, scientific prose, doesn't. Um, it's more heart to heart. And um, so I've been to several poetry festivals reading in Slovenia, uh, sorry, in Macedonia. The Struga Poetry Festival, I was invited to present three times running. And it's an amazing festival, it's still going. I've invited several of these festivals to join us today. I don't know who's going to turn up. Um, and, um, you know, these, uh, I've discovered there's a whole underground movement for poets, poetry festivals across Europe, which very much overlaps with the Druid work. Uh, so, you know, and now we can hear poetry later on. Mama, can I sign your microphone so speaking? That would be really good. Uh, Edelaide, oh, well, thanks for joining us. And you're coming from Brazil, so that's brilliant, but we're going to mute you. <laughs> okay, you'll be speaking later. Right, um, any other questions? Now, I think what I'll do, uh, just to finish my little time slot, and this is my kind of welcome to everybody, so welcome to Edelaide. We, we've been joined by people also from across the Atlantic. Um, although we're the European Council of Druids, Bards, and I, I thought that we could have a few speakers coming and joining us from overseas, um, because after all, uh, they look back on European culture as something of value. So welcome to them all. And we have somebody from Brazil here, Adelaide, who will be speaking later. And we're going to be joined by some people from the West Coast of America, 
um, who will be speaking, but they're still in bed. It's 5 a.m. there. And they said they don't want to get up till 7. <laughs> Fair Hi. enough. Okay. Um, right. Let's, um, let me just end my little slot with a poem. <clears throat> there might not be time later, so I'll get my poem in now. And this, this can uh, introduce you to some of the poetic works that I've tried to do. Um, <clears throat> let me... Uh, okay, this is a poem uh, I wrote in Greece. Um, it's an homage to Homer. I regard Homer as one of the great bards of European culture. To me, Homer is, is the quintessential bard who wrote down the um, activities of the gods. What I like about Homer is he was had one ear listening to the gods and one ear to human affairs. That's what a true bard does. A seer sees what the deities are up to and how they're impacting on human affairs. So in my readings of the whole crazy politics of the world at the moment, you know, I'm always seeing it from the angle of the gods. What are they plotting? What wars are going on in heaven? I mean, there's an awful lot of wars going on in heaven, let's face it, <laughs> um, as they were in Homer's time. Nothing's different. And when I sat on the mound of Troy and I mused with Homer's spirit overshadowing me, you know, I, I, I asked him, I said, look, what can we do? <laughs> the planet's falling apart still after all these years. The wars are going on. And I got a vision, actually, which I'll share with you before I read the poem. What we ought to organize is a peace conference in Troy. There's a little town near called Chanakale. We could organize a peace conference and invite all the European and all the Asian peace activists and seers and bards and mystics and, you know, assembled sages and finally bury the hatchet that was started over the Trojan War, which was the first ever European versus Asia contest. And we've been doing this endlessly for thousands of years. It was all over a woman anyway, which is absurd, the goddess. We should not be fighting over that. And in fact, I take the view that Paris gave the wrong answer when he was asked by the three goddesses, who's the most beautiful, Hera, Aphrodite or Athena? He, of course, chose Aphrodite, which caused all the trouble. He should have said, I can't choose between you because you're all amazing. I love you all equally. That was the right answer. <laughs> and look at the trouble it caused. So if you're ever asked that question, that's the answer. I've given you a tip there. Right, here's my poem, Homer reminiscences reminiscences and i wrote it actually at troy because i went on pilgrimage there but can you hear the call whipped up and the spray can you hear the conference of the gods stirring in the winds they are discussing our doom and our weird. Listen carefully. Where fleet-footed dawn raises skyward, trailing her beautiful aura of silk clouds, tinged with orange fire, the bright clash of glistening light comes after. In those few moments, when Helios puts on his sun plate glory, all is hushed. Even the birds look on in rapture. Blind am I to such ethereal enlovements. To me is given to see only with mind light and my hearing is sharp as the blades whisper. To me is given only to speak forth between realms, a messenger of light going to and fro between the mundane and the magnificent. All poets and bards who have come after ours walked onwards in the footsteps of my own inward seeing. I see the world as whole, 
rayed through with destiny, each in its sphere, performing daily miracles. From dawn to dusk, each moment is someone's awful spell for our upraising. I sit here, resting, content, knowing my words have survived. Other pens and voices must take up the never-ending story. Okay, Shalom, there's my little poem from, from Homer. Uh, one of, it's from volume six of my collected works. And um, right, okay, look, let's move on. That's, that's me welcoming you on behalf of the Order of Peace Poets, Bards and Druids. And um, I want to move on to our first slot. We've got um, people here from Avebury, which is a place that's very dear to me. Um, Avebury is a magnificent stone circle in England. We're going to be hearing about what it is and, and why it's important. For me personally, it's important. There's, um, it's where I was given the Peace Sword of Britain, which is hovering over my shoulder, you might see it, many years ago in a big ceremony. And um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's open to the public unlike Stonehenge, which is shut. Right, let's move on. Um, so let's hear, um, Emlyn, you're with us, I believe. It's your turn, sir. Introduce Hi, your- Thomas. Hello. Thank Thank you for the introduction. Um, I think an intellectual is someone who can talk about Homer without thinking about The Simpsons. Uh -huh. um, Avebury is, for those of you who don't know, is situated in Wiltshire in southwest England. It's in an area of uh, rich chalk based land. The area itself went under the transformation in between. 4,200 BCE and 4,000 BCE, where it is clear that the area was cleared so that farming could take place. Farming communities established there, were established there. And although it's not defined when the site of Avebury starts to become a temple and start, there starts to be work done, it's estimated that it was around 3,000 years BCE. When we talk about these dates, it's hard to put into your mindset the distances in these numbers. We're talking about a community, a farming community that were on the land, working the land for a thousand years before they started to erect the temple that we now see as Avery. That didn't happen in a one-off construction. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't put forward by the local community, right? We need to get a contract out to a building suppliers to come and build this fantastic site. It happened over a long period of time. And what we call Avery now, although it is defined as the iconic stone circle, which actually is the only stone circle that I know of, which includes a whole village inside it, that's the scale of the thing. It also is a complex that stretches for miles around the village of Avery. There is no actual uh, archaeological evidence to say that Druids, as described by the Romans, carried out ceremony in Avery. It would appear, if you listen to the archaeologists, that towards the end of the uh, Bronze Age, Avebury went out of use. And indeed, there is evidence to say that Romans were the first tourists to visit Avebury. Roman pottery has been found in Avebury. But there is no doubt that it was of huge spiritual significance to the ancient Britons. When I talk about the whole site, I talk about a henge, which is a ditch that has been dug and the chalk from the ditch was then piled up into a round henge, 
that runs right round all the stones in the site. Thomas, I've got a photograph of the site, but I can't share it on this content. Is it possible that if I can do that? You're still muted, Thomas. That's yeah, it. I think you can share it. I have to press something to make that possible. Says so only the host can share this meeting. Yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to change that. Uh, all participants can share. There we are. Okay. You could put it in the chat. Yeah. I'm you just going to try and do. In the chat. Yeah, I think I think you should be all right now. Can we see that? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. You can see the hens there, and you can see the start of the outer ring of stone circles. And just behind that outer ring of stone circles on your left, you can see the hens running right round the site. And in the middle is the village of Avebury itself. Okay. Okay. So we have this massive site. Now, unlike Stonehenge, there is a specific energy to do with Avebury. It is a predominantly feminine energy. And also, the great thing about Avebury itself is it's completely open to the public. People are not led anti-clockwise around the site, which was what happened at, at Stonehenge. And there are people associated with Avebury who think that that has actually affected the spirituality of Stonehenge. And when it comes to the major festivals like summer solstice, winter solstice, a lot of people prefer to go to Avebury for the more relaxed, more peaceful, more feminine energy that there is there. Going from Avebury is a avenue of stones, which is called the avenue. It is in a serpent-like shape, and it goes to a place called the sanctuary. Avebury is very much associated with the ceremonies to do with the dead. It would appear that ceremonies for specific warriors, princes, important people took place in Avebury. And the bodies were then taken from Avebury along the avenue to the sanctuary. From the sanctuary, there is a land bridge that goes to Swallowhead Spring, which is roughly half a mile from Avery itself. Swallowhead Spring is the source of the two great rivers of Southern England, the Thames and the Seven. The spirits would be sent to Swallowhead Spring to be reborn again. Across the road from Swallowhead Spring is Silbury Hill, the great enigma of British archaeology. Silbury Hill is the largest man-made hill in Europe. In its center is a core of round pebble-shaped chalk stones. The actual reason for Silbury Hill has never actually been discovered. There are plenty of theories. If you go there uh, uh, yourselves, you need to soak up the energies. That is very much akin to the whole of the site. The whole of Avebury is a personal experience for individuals who are interested in following a path. Above the tower, the village, is, are the groves which lie at the end of the Ridgeway. The Ridgeway was an ancient uh, pilgrimage path to Avebury, which started up in Oxfordshire somewhere. There is an enigma and a mystery about Avebury that is not able to be transferred on a talk. It is very much for the individual. We, as the Druid Order of Avebury, have our Archduke and Terry Dobney. Terry Dobney was, became very ill about two years ago and hasn't been able to perform ceremony since. But his ethical ideas were of preserving the spiritual context of Avery in a capitalist society. 
the order was founded to protect Terry and to protect Avebury from intrusions from other groups who would like to use Avebury and an association with Avebury in order to promulgate and promote various financial aspects of their own particular organizations. We live in a capitalist world. A capitalist world relies on things like war and the pursuit of the dollar and the pound and the gold standard rather than the pursuit of the individual and society's, society's benefits. What we would like to do is we would like to preserve Avery as a sanctuary of peace that anyone can come to. And there are plenty of warriors who come to Avery and lay down their sword. Terry had a, a, had a belief that no weapon should ever be carried into the circle and used in ceremony. That brought him into conflict with certain pagan groups who wanted to use the sword, etc. But what needs to be preserved about Avery is Terry's legacy. The ceremonies will be carried out by volunteers who will do the ceremonies the way Terry used to do them. And hopefully, although the place itself is used by very many diverse groups and is thronged by tourists from every part of the world, we will keep this as an intrinsic sacred temple of the ancient Britons that is still today being used for the, for the purposes of peace and unity. That's basically what I've got to say, Thomas. And if right. uh, you want to ask any questions, I'll try well, and ask. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much, Emlyn. Um, okay, let's move on. You said it's a feminine energy. Let's move on to our uh, other colleague from Avery, uh, Alex Spurway, if you're there still. And let Alex add to that. And if there's time, we'll have a couple of questions after. Alex, go for it. We'll have to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm really pleased. Thank you, um, Emlyn, for giving us the historical viewpoint of Avery. I was a bit concerned that I might overlap on information. And if I do, apologies. Um, but I don't think I do too much. Um, firstly, I'd like to say greetings from Avebury here in Wiltshire, the UK. And hello, it's a pleasure to share and to receive all your insight too um, of what's happening around the world globally on the spiritual and peace front. So I'm looking forward to hearing you too. Um, thank you, Thomas, for hosting um, this opportunity it's very much appreciated and it's a privilege to be here. Um, I'm sure it's been the same with all orders at the moment, not a lot happening on the ground. More, a lot about electronic cohesiveness, which has actually given us all an opportunity to expand our connectedness. What I'm about to do is share with you a little bit more about the Avery Temple, as I'm sure um, Emlyn has given a fantastic overview on the history. But I'm going to go a little bit deeper. As Emlyn has said, it's a huge complex, a ceremonial site, originally going back nearly 5,000 years, with periodic additions through the ages, the stone avenues, the sanctuary, as well as the stone hinge itself. It's beautiful and very much alive with magic and telluric energies. And I'd like to actually pop a picture on there if I may. I'm hoping it's going to work. Um, bear with me. It's not allowing me, I'm unfortunately. Oh, yes, it did. What I want to do is actually share the, um, the energy that runs through Avebury, we were talking about the feminine energies, there's both the Michael and the Mary Lay as well. Um, bear with me and I just want to give you a quick view of that. It's a bit slow. No, 
it says no. <laughs> okay, so I'll get back to this. I will try and post it through the course of the, of the talk. Okay, where was I? So yes, so the sanctuary, the henge itself, and it's beautiful, very beautiful, and very much alive with magic and telluric energies. The flow of the Michael and the Mary ley lines that link and meet at three points during uh, going across the site. And from what I understand, Avebury is a solar and a lunar temple, a truly unique temple, a world heritage site with millions of visitors every day from around the world bathing in those energies, the stones and the land. The reason I see Avebury as unique is due to its residential community. In a way, it protects from leisure and tourism, which is a wonderful freedom and gifts the spiritual community there. We currently have two registered orders at Avebury, Terry Dobney's order, the Druid order of Avebury, and the new order, the Kurgans. As well as being a member of Thomas's European Peace Order, I'm also a member of Terry Dobney's order, the Druid order of Avebury. We usually gather to observe the solstices and the equinoxes, as well as the sabbats through the solar cycle. The Druid Order is also usually invited to hold space and ceremony at the new 21st century Long Barrow at Old Cannings near Devizes. It was, its concept was conceived by Tim Dore, who's made it manifest. Um, when we're invited there, we usually in, are invited during the winter solstice to welcome the sun, to give prayers for those loved ones that still remain in this realm and bless those in the Long Barrow as ancestors of this time. I see a Avebury as unique due to its um, residential community and its protection of the temple. It gifts the spiritual community and has the potential to come together in a peace and a debate through a forum called the Avebury Sacred Site. Now, in the Avebury Sacred Sites Forum, there are representatives from the Wiccan community, the Druidic community, the Christian community, the National Trust. The National Trust is our equivalent of um, land protection and maintenance. Along with the residents of Avebury who come together, we all meet um, quarterly to discuss events going ahead. I believe that Terry Dobney was instrumental in being a light beacon for this process. And for many years here, he has created a foundation for the next generation. And in that foundation, a collective voice in the Druidic community by the Avery Sacred Sites Forum, an elevation in a peace process for all um, going forward for all systems of belief and faith. The National Trust provides camping facilities for local members on agreed pagan dates with amenities, hot drinks and food available, security for the residents, medical help at the summer solstice by the St. John's Ambulance, transport coordination by Wiltshire County Council. All of these are agreed and discussed through the medium of the ASAF committee, a truly wonderful opportunity. From the Christian community here in Avebury, Maria, the resident vicar, has placed the peace flame from Hiroshima, which burns brightly in our local church. Um, it's, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of peace for all the, collect, the eclectic belief systems here in the Avebury community. And is also actually, I've only just recently found out, a pilgrimage point for the Camino Trail. It has a symbol of the, the shell, just as you walk into the church gardens. As a community, we have come together in peace for the greater good of the community and the respect for those who have pioneered the way for all of us here at Avery. And a great respect is due to them. Avery has a lot of smaller groups who attend the temple and host walks and and talks. For example, Maria Wheatley, you may have heard of, Peter Knight, Stuart Dow. If not, I urge you to pick up their books and have a read. It's very interesting stuff, fascinating. And of course, our beloved um, Kivan Manwaring 
who his inspired bardic po poems come from the landscape. I'm sure you've all heard of his, his poems from Avery. With all that being said, I invite you to investigate the history of this magnificent temple. And I hope many of you, I hope to see many of you in person next year so that we can share some more potential some more ideas of going forward in how we can create a cohesive community of all faiths, which is being shown at Avery at this time. So until then, be safe, be well, my brothers and sisters around the world, much love and happy equinox at this time of the balance. Like um, Thomas has suggested, we've got a bit of time for questions. If anybody wants to put anything forward to me or Emlyn, we'd be happy to help. If we can't answer anything, please pop your email in the message box and I'm happy to get back to you. So thank you, Thomas. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Alex. Has anyone got any questions about Avery? Uh, now's your chance to ask the experts. Hi, um, can you hear me okay? Yes, Isabella, yes. greetings. Um, I, I visited Avery uh, many years ago um, and I loved it. I've got a photograph that I was going to go and grab, but that, that's okay. Comments that were made about um, the, the site and the road cutting through, some people said, oh, it cuts through the energy suggesting it, it wasn't good. But I didn't feel that. I felt that the that, that, that the energy was there regardless of any physical material thing that was placed after it was uh, originally um, constructed, the, the road that is. So I, I would love to hear some comment on, on that. From my yeah. viewer, Emlyn. Um, I'm happy to go ahead. Um, Isabella, I agree with you. I see it as um, protection, actually, that it is not going to be um, cut off altogether and secured for leisure and tourism. I feel that the energies within Avery, even when you play with the energy and you stand on the inside of the stones and then you stand on the outside to feel all of that energy, you can still feel it. You are still drawn to, to different stones to, to bring out um, the emotions that you aren't even aware of yourself. It still has so much magic there. And I don't believe that the road going through it cuts anything off. In fact, whoever <clears throat> drives through was probably picking up the energy, going on to, on their merry way, wherever they're going and holding that energy that we invoke there. The same with all the visitors from around the globe. They don't even know why they come sometimes. But they're, they're, it's almost like they're called. And they, the stone gifts them in many ways to inspire. And they take that inspiration with them. And I believe even driving through the site, it's being carried. That's what I believe. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, what concerns me more is the... Um, is the water board and their um, their borehole on the uh, Bullhead Spring site, because that is the source of the Kennet River, and the Kennet River fe feeds the Thames uh, and the Severn. And um, I I'm more concerned about the amount of times that that is actually dry, because the uh, the water has been diverted from the underground spring to to the local water table. I'd be more concerned about that than the flow. That's a very good point, yes. Mm. Mm. Right, thank you. Um, okay, so I think we need to move on. Um, I'm trying to contact our next speaker, who is supposed to be joining us, Wayne Hughes. Is there a Wayne Hughes in the room? I don't think Wayne has joined us yet. So I'm going to suggest a slight change to the programme then. Um, our friends from Austria... Um, Uther and um, Arwen. I think we should let the Austrian Druid order go next because um, they were instrumental in helping set up the European Council and they're joining us from Austria. So 
Uther and Armin, can you hear me? Uh, <laughs> um, hopefully, we can have a, um, a report from, from Austria. The Austrian Druid Order, let me just introduce them, are quite dynamic. They've got quite a good um, activity going and uh, have been organizing many things for many years. So welcome, Uther and Arwen. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay. I'm also welcome. Good. Um, we are very happy also in this uh, Congress. I will tell you, we cannot speak so much very well <laughs> English. We do our level best what we can. And um, Yes, so I will also translate what Ma Uta say. Okay, Yeah, also we we'll thank you. We are here now in by all of us. All of you. Because we are the Austrian Druid Order and in this this year we have the we are twenty years old. This order. In this period. In this time, we have tried nature philosophy in Österreich bekannt to make. In this time, we was looking for to bring the um, the the old, old philosophy of the Celtic way back. And um, go on this route. Und uns ist immer wichtig, mit den verschiedenen Regierungsteilen zusammenzuarbeiten. And for us it's very important to work together. Damit es auch in der Bevölkerung besser ankommt und äh, ja, nicht nur irgendwelche New Age Menschen im Wald herumstehen. So also the, the people in Austria will remember us these roots and start to remember our culture and to realize uh, it's not a, only a culture in the past sondern you can live also in this uh, moment in this time. Und wir mal mit anderen Organisationen wie den Friedensmarsch Zusammenarbeit. And so we work also together with other groups to go the, uh, the peaceful way. Es gibt da in Österreich den Bodensee, uh, der größte, uh, oder der andere größten See in Europa. Sorry. Yes, uh, we also we have a lake, the name is Bodensee, and there are a lot of gro groups there are peace groups uh, and want to, to go together with uh, many of groups in the world. To, and also with Switzerland, Germany and Austria. Und mit diesen Ländern und Gruppen arbeiten wir zusammen. And with, with these lands we work in groups or we work together. Und jedes Jahr ist da im April dieser Lauf um den Bodensee. And every year Uh, in, in April, all these people come together and go around this uh, big lake, Bodensee. Und da sind wir in dieser Organisationsgruppe mit drinnen. And we also are part of them. Und uh, da haben wir zum Beispiel morgen eine Sitzung in Deutschland. Wir sprechen mit Deutschland den nächsten Marsch. And tomorrow we also come together with a group and we speak about this uh, meeting und, in April. And uh, ganz wichtig is da für, für den ÖDO, dass wir über den Frieden hinausgehen. Mehr als den Frieden machen. And also it's very important for the ÖDO to go more like only the business. Ich habe zum Beispiel auch mit dem Bürgermeister von Feldkirch gesprochen. For example of the government of Feldkirch, we also speak with him. Uh, weil es gibt in ganz Europa sogenannte Friedenspfähle. Also and, also Denkmäler und and here in Europa we have also, I don't know the, the word, it is a wood stick. A wood stick, oh. a big wood stick for peace. For peace. And in every in every place uh, of the different um, 
uh, like in, in Vorarlberg or Switzerland, um, Vorarlberg, Tyrol, and so on, in every place, send so this wood stick for peace? Uh, <coughs> Wir halten uns, oder wir möchten auch das umsetzen, was Pythagoras und Neupythagorea über die Freundschaft sprechen. Und also, um, we want to do it, uh, this, like Pythagoras, he speak about the uh, Friendship. Friendship. Um, Friendship. Friendship. Und uh, das versuchen wir, den Regierungen und den Bürgermeistern, beziehungsweise wir haben auch mit unseren Landeshauptmann, also wie man das äh, And also we, we speak with the government von Vorarlberg. Dass Freundschaft mehr ist als Frieden. So friendship is more, is more like peace. Äh, was ist der Unterschied für uns? What is the difference? Friede kann man auch haben, wenn man eine Ruhe gibt, wenn man sich zurückzieht und passiv ist. Friede you can have when you are um, uh, still and you do nothing. Und Freundschaft uh, sehen wir so, dass man aber auf den anderen zugehen muss und zugehen soll. And uh, in friendship we must come together and speak with each other and find a good consensus. Und so sind alle unsere Aktionen geplant. And so all our uh, actions are planned uh, in this way. Und zielt darauf hin, die Leute zusammenzubringen. And the, the, um, the point is to come together, a lot of people who think in the same way. Und das, in, ja, und das machen wir in, in, in aller Öffentlichkeit, dass es auch alle Menschen da von der Bevölkerung mitbekommen. And so we, we go out, uh, so the people can see what we do about mm -hmm. it. Und äh, der Hintergrund an der ganzen Sache ist, And the, in the background ist, of this. ist eigentlich diese Beziehung und, 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 und das Leben in und mit der Natur. Und für to go in, 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 in a deep contact with, with nature, the godness. Auch schon die in Ketten und in antiken Schriften und, und, und Texten. And also in, in this Celtic way, in the history. Dass die Freundschaft nicht nur zwischen Menschen passieren muss. And not only about the, the friendship between the people. Und die Menschen untereinander im Frieden leben. And the people live in, in a peace way together. Sondern gerade jetzt in dieser Zeit äh, erfahren wir das, dass es viel wichtiger ist auch mit der Natur. In this time, so we can see it is very important to go in a, in a deep contact also with the nature also mit, and our old tradition way. Mit Mutter Erde. And with Mother Earth. Mit unseren Wurzeln. Eben mit with the, the roots. Keltischen Denken. Uh, in the Celtic way. Die, das Druidentum als Friedensbringer. And also the Druid way uh, can bring the peace. Die Freundschaft mit den Tieren, mit and den Pflanzen. And the friendship with the animals and the plants. Und, und über den, der, oder politischen Grenzen hinaus zu, zu fördern. And uh, go over all these uh, politisch uh, borders and so on in all the world. Zum Beispiel haben wir dann nächste Woche ein Treffen von Deutschland, Österreich und Schweiz. Uh, for example, the next week uh, we have a meeting and people come from Austria, German and Switzerland. Und haben, machen das schon zum dritten Together. Mal. And we uh, make this meeting three times in the past. Uh, früher haben wir mehr Workshops uh, organisiert. <lacht> And in this, uh, in the past, we uh, we are make more workshops and knowledge in 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 this meeting. Und heuer ist es ein drei Tage Ritual für Mutter Erde. But in in this meeting now, in the next weekend, we make a very big uh, ritual, three days long for the Mother Earth. Wo alles drinnen ist, äh, von, von Corona und Umweltschutz und anderem. Und, und so, Problem. all this, this, uh, this Thema of this, this Corona and so on is in, included in this ceremony. 
Und äh, mhm. da hoffen wir, dass auch dieser Funke viel mehr zu den Menschen überspringt und nicht nur im Wissen und im Lernen von dem Keltentum äh, ist, sondern auch im Alltag umgesetzt wird. So, uh, we are hope so many people um, take uh, some, um, how I can say, uh, of this of this wisdom and uh, the prayers it will go in the heart of the people and um, so the the uh, tradition all tradition way and Celtic way uh, will can start again and come back uh, because it's is uh, very be, um, very important because the the earth is in a big cleaning process also dass die menschen erkennen dass sie Teil einer Ahnenkette sind, dass sie zu den Ahnen gehören. So we realize we are part of the, the uh, ancestors and we stay in this line of our ancestors. Und dass sie nicht nur das Ende der Ahnen sind, sondern auch der Beginn für die Nächsten und die Verantwortung übernehmen können. Because it's not the, uh, it's not the end of our ancestors line. We are the next generation uh, to, to can live this, this way and it's very important. Und so freuen wir uns, dass wir auch einen äh, Nemeton auf der Pazora jetzt bauen dürfen. And so we also build a, Nem a Nemeton, a Woodhenge in, in a place in the mountains. Mhm. Äh, den wir nachher wirklich öffentlich betreuen können. So, für die Bevölkerung von Österreich neu. Because this Woodhenge is for all the people in, in Austria also. And we will build this Woodhenge now. Äh, Eigentlich hätten wir uns ja gewünscht, dass wir uns heuer nicht bei da im Computer, sondern äh, physisch in Vorderberg treffen können. Because it would, would be very nice when we can come together, not only in the computer way, <lacht> so we can sit together, it's more easy to speak. Und so steht unsere Einladung auch für nächstes Jahr, also wenn es möglich ist für den Thomas oder für alle, dass wir uns nächstes Jahr da bei uns treffen, dann organisieren wir das gerne. And when it's uh, possible for every one of you um, to come to us, so we would be very happy and it is very grateful to see us together and can speak and enjoying this time. Okay. Yeah, das wäre mal so das Wichtigste und wenn Sie noch was wissen wollen, Fragen haben. And so this is what I want to say. Uh, and when you have question about everything or about us, we, we are, can speak. Okay, thank you so much, Uther. Nice to see you again. Greetings. <laughs> and Arwen, thanks for your translation. So yes. you have a question. <laughs> I do my level best. <laughs> yeah, you did very well. Um, so, because it's, it's, we, we make this way so long time, it's our heart and it's our um, feeling and also the, the family of us, the children's and also the from the children's, how do I say, Enke, um, the, the children's of them. Uh, so we live together this way and uh, yes, we are very happy to can speak to you. Okay, any questions from, from other people? I've got, it's not so much a question, it's a gratitude. I want to say thank you to them both for basically instigating this prayer to the earth this weekend. Does it start on the Friday and goes through yes. to the Monday? I just want to let you know that we will be thinking of you and we will be feeling those energies and we will intend the same at Avebury mm -hmm. so that it is a global intention. Thank yes. you so much. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Um, can I just ask, um, whilst other people are thinking, Arwen, um, as well as being a translator, you're a spiritual seeker in your own right. And I got to know you when you came here all the way to France. You've been on many spiritual journeys to Nepal and God knows what. Tell us a bit about your spiritual journey as well. And, and how your, you know, you see Druidry in the world map and in Europe. Yes. Um, I, I make the spiritual way in the Chankri way. I learned it in Nepal because it was very difficult to find someone 
who can teach me the 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 whole uh, healing way with mythology and so on and yantra tantra mantra and so, and so i go this way and i have here a praxis and i make also the pulse diagnosis and all the sintas and puchas what the people need when they are sick and so we speak about it the, the world is in, in a big process in a healing process it's like a collective karma we say and so it's very important to clean ourselves, be in the mind, in the heart, and in all this, what we do with other people and come together in a peaceful way, in a very heartful way. And this is a, a, a very deep praxis, what we do here, all what we, <laughs> all people in this meeting now. And I think it's very important to come together because we need each other. We cannot do the work alone. It's too big. <laughs> it's very important. So mm -hmm. we must come together in all the parts of the world and, and say, okay, now this is our mother. Mother is not only, co it's not only a, we can say is a, a feminine, like, <laughs> like a woman. Uh -huh. It's more bigger, it's, it's, a, it's a mystery, it's a big mystery. And she is so powerful and we are the children of Sam and it's our das to support her now. And also for the next generations. Yeah. It's very important. Thank you, Arwen. We must remember it now, our culture and our way to live it and to show the children how you can live in a peaceful way. Blessings mm -hmm. <laughs> that. It. Yeah. And um, so, and this is this is my work is um, the people come to me and ask for help. And so this is my my main profession <laughs> and my deep praxis. And we live it together with my husband and man this this way is country way. And so we do the level best what we can. It's touching me now when it to speak about it. <laughs> because it's it's all my my thinking, my heart and I was I'm very happy we are sitting now together here. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I also say thank you for this. <laughs> also, let me just add, um, before we move on to our next speaker, in my Encyclopedia of Druid Studies, I think I've sent you a copy. Um, I did a whole section on Tantra and Druidry. The links between the old Tantric tradition of Nepal and India and the Druid traditions. I mean, we've heard Avebury is at least 3,000 years old and older. Well, so is Tantra, you know, the, the work you've been doing in Nepal, learning these mudras and, and uh, the whole tradition. Obviously, the Druids had the equivalent, and our job is to try and reclaim that. I believe the Tibetan Buddhist Tantric teachers talk about what's called termas. These are mind teachings left by previous masters and sages in a place. And the bodhisattvic student can pick up on them, download the termas. I believe we Druids can do the same. If you go to Avebury or you go and find some place in the Austrian mountains, if you go and find a cave which was used, you know, 5,000 years ago, you can pick up these termas. And I know as a young student studying philosophy at Bristol University when I resigned, because all they were teaching was um, logical positivism, and said mysticism was nonsense. So I resigned in protest and walked to Stonehenge <laughs> as a young man of 20. And I, I got all these termers. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. So I think that's another angle to what we Druids are doing. And it's really important. You're a pioneer of interfaith spiritual exploration. Many Druids do that. We go and study and, you know, even in ancient times, we were traveling all over Europe and Asia learning from different teachers and we're still doing it so keep up the fantastic work um blessings okay i think we now we're going to okay one more question from london here london's yes. coming in 
Hello, Otha. Um, my, one of my daughters visited Vienna uh, recently, and she sent me um, a short video showing uh, people traveling on um, a horse and, and cart. Um, she said, there are, I haven't seen cars. People either travel by scooter or the horse and the cart is the equivalent of Uber. <laughs> you understand? I wanted to ask, is this common practice for everybody or is it focused on tourism? No, 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 this, this is, this is uh, opening. Everybody can come and, and this is a practice so everybody can practice it. It is, it's not only for tourists. Good. This is oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Uh, this is no, no, I... no. This is this is a very uh, no, this is a very deep practice. Uh -huh. hmm. So when when um, I also learned or I when I learned my my praxis, my my Chengri, it is shamanic way. I also <laughs> must visit must see it in the in the in the caves and in the places. Uh, to, to learn it, to go in contact with all these spirits. And also we make it at home or in our country. And so this is for everybody. Uh -huh. And also what we do is these fests and so on. Um, we work together with uh, archaeological uh, people and to look what is, what is the, the part of the Celtic way we can, we can Brexit it. And so it's for everybody, it's not only for tourists. Good. Thank you. I'm sure, Isabel, I'm sure that the, the horse and cart thing is um, also coming back. So that was a good question. Good. good. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so maybe I don't understand you right. No, no, we got, I think we got, we got more of an answer than we asked for. So that's superb. Right. Thank you again, Arwen and Uther. And stay around in the meeting. You know, there'll be more discussion and so on. Um, Yes, I want to move on and invite our guest from Italy, Rosalba, who is joining us from Turin, which is a, one of the most magical cities of Europe. Um, and she's got some very interesting material to share about a Druid order that she's involved with in the north of Italy. So, Rosalba, do unmute yourself and uh, share your um, secrets with us. <laughs> Okay, can you listen me? Yes. Okay. Um, hi to everybody. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I have some problem with uh, the language, with the English. So I read my statement. Uh, I hope uh, not to bore too much you. Uh, hi also uh, the, the black cat that I seen before, the lovely black cat. <laughs> Um, my name is Rosalba Natero. I am the president and co-founder of the New York Circle. I am honored to participate in this European Council and I warmly thank the president of this assembly for this opportunity. Let me tell you about my organization and what it does. <clears throat> the New York Circle is an organization founded by Giancarlo Barbadoro and me in 1986 in Scotland with uh, spiritual leaders from all over the world following the principle of peace. The New York Circle has deep roots in the ancient heart, heart of the tradition, tradition of Druidic shamanism and is uh, the result of a long, long journey into the history of native Europeans. Uh, New York Circle draws from ancient during the shamanism, especially the mystical and historical knowledge from the Taisarinai, the Book of Heaven and Earth. 
that is a precious text handed down by the keepers of the traditions and it uh, contains the legacy passed over millennia from ancient times to our days. It was written in the archaic Shana language and it is a very important collection of historical and moral experience from the legendary age of the Grail to uh, the more recent barbaric times after the Ice Age when the earth was steadily become a patriarchal domain. The ways of uh, Druidic tradition can be mysterious at times. One of them traveled from ancient times to reach the founder of the New York Circle. The New York Circle has very ancient origins. Since the Middle Age, other, other traditional community of Ireland, Scotland, and France have transmitted the values and experience of the culture of ancient native Europeans. Um, the initiative has arisen in our time from the moral convergence of, convergence of several communities from all over the continent, belong, belonging the same ancient tradition of native Europeans with a view to operating culturally in modern history, but with a new social cultural ideas. This culture stands on the fundamental principle of brotherhood freedom and knowledge. Giancarlo Barbadoro, founder of the New York Circle, passed away on 6 August 2019. He was a musician, poet, journalist, and researcher. He was considered a warrior and a shaman. He founded the New York Circle on 2 September 1986 in Scotland, together with myself and spiritual guides from all over the world. The aim was to create a global spiritual community open to all those who wish to share the harmony of, or, uh, of the philosophy of nature expressed by eco-spirituality and based on the experience of meditation, harmony and brotherhood to be shared with all living beings. The story of Giancarlo was, uh, is uh, extraordinary. At a very young age, in a clearing in the forest where he lived, he met someone who told him about the ancient indigenous tradition associated with Druidic shamanism. They continued to meet for several years and we learned about an alternative history, history of the planet. After that, he lived two lives, one in the majority society and one as a member of an indigenous, an indigenous community, as in the case with many natives belonging to tribal communities. This event led him to devote his life in discovering the tradition of native Europeans and to spreading a culture that he believed has been stolen from us, preventing us from knowing our true origins. The legend of Peton for example, as interpreted by indigenous communities, is a tale from the remote past, even before people appeared as they do now. The legends say superior being came down to earth from space and gave immense knowledge to mankind. This legend impressed Giancarlo and influenced him for the rest of his life. His uh, discoveries involving the city of Rama, starting from almost 50 years ago, have been a guideline for a number of researchers. He was an avid follower of megalithism and founded the eco village of Dream Dreamland, North Italy, where he had a large stone circle erected. His aim was to keep Celtic culture alive and to combat the destruction of megalithic temples which unfortunately occurred everywhere in the past and still happen today, especially in Italy. The New York Circle community celebrates the, the rights of the solstices and equinoxes within the stone circle of Dreamland. In his life, Giancarlo always stood up for the weakest, especially indigenous people and animals. He was an animal rights activist, a cause he cared from more than any other 
as he considered them the most unfortunate, unfortunate beings on the earth. Indeed, Giancarlo Barbadoro spent his entire life collecting and preserving the peace of the Druid tradition, an immense amount of rites, symbols, legends, testimonies, a priceless legacy that the New York Circle community preserved carefully. Over the years, a lot of people have joined in the New York Circle and are taking their history back, a history that has been denied to us by the repressed the repression that Native Europeans have suffered. The Native Europeans who we can identify with the Celts represent the example of, of a history that is usually denied. This heritage is carried on by those who have held the, the tradition dear, that is, the Druids. Today, the ancient European traditions survive in the, the Native communities which keep the reference to the ancient tradition of Native Europeans alive, and their sacred places are still used to celebrate the religious, religious and social rites. These indigenous communities are also present in Northern Italy, as in the case of the newer circle community. Over the years, newer circle has set up of a lot of initiative aimed to achieving peace and making a contribution to a better world. New York Circle created Eco-Spirituality Foundation, a body recognized by the UN as an NGO in consultative status with the United Nations because of its work in defense of sacred places of indigenous people around the world. Giancarlo Barbadoro and I have been appointed, appointed representatives of five native communities from all continents and we present their claims in defense of sacred places to the UN seats in Geneva and New York, a work that still goes on. Music and poetry play an important role in the activity, activity of the New York Circle. Giancarlo Barbadoro and I founded the Celtic music group Lab Graal, a group of five musicians who want to rediscover the ancient Celtic and shamanic music. Giancarlo performed both as a poet and flautist. The group purpose is to keep alive the musical roots of the native European and to convey through music, poetry, and dance, the values of Druid society based on harmony and brotherhood. Your circle and its initiative, and its initiative aims to protect Mother Earth and all her children. Eco-spirituality is a way of life that draws from ancient philosophy of natural people of the planet. Man is not seen, is not seen as absolute ruler of the whole creation with the power of life and death over all other species, but is, is considered an equal among everything that lives, that lives. The inner harmony that a person can feel when, when inspired by teaching of nature, the only true mother, lets them to extend such harmony to all that surround them with full respect for the planet and all its, its inhabitants, no matter with what species they belong to. We are all children of Mother Earth and non-human animals are our brothers. Sadly, in this historical time, there is no respect for non-human animals, nor for Mother Earth. This is why your circle strives for harmony and contributing to a better world by supporting initiative in defense of animal rights. Since its birth, the New York Circle has worked for the global spreading of meditation, considering it an instrument of growth and inner harmony that is inspired by nature in its global meaning. With his mind, is in mind, the New York Circle has supported since its very beginning the worldwide meditation initiative that takes place every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Paris time. In conclusion, uh, the tradition of natural people of the entire planet, uh, as in tradition of natural people of the entire planet, the New York Circle represents a sacred circle 
where all meditants can meet and recognize themselves. A spiritual circle that keeps ancient experience of humanity alive, in which a personal growth is possible thanks to the support of the tradition. The New York Circle is inspired by the spirit expressed in the ancient Celtic poems for the realiz realization of a better world, based on the principle of peace and brotherhood among all creatures, freedom of thought and free personal access to knowledge. My personal mission and commitment are to preserve and pass on the precious wealth of ancestral knowledge transmitted to me by the founder of the New Earth Circle. I would like to conclude with a little poem by Giancarlo Barbadoro that embodies the spirit of the New Earth Circle. If I have just... Sure, you have time, yeah. Thanks. Living Universe by Giancarlo Barbadoro. We were all there. We did not know that one day we would have existed. We could not know it, but we were all there in an infinite moment at the stars of the universe. We were all there together with the immense mountains, with the deep seas, with the future perfumes of the springs. They already was my face, there already was my face in the mirror of the infinity. There already was the sky of stars that I would admire, asking myself whom I was. There was everyone. We were all an only single thing. We were all there in an infinite point from which we would begin our existence. I leave you with a farewell in the Shannar language of ancient Druid shamanism. Ara, brothers and sisters, I hope to meet you soon within our great stone circle. Thank you. Thank ah. you for your patience. <laughs> Thank you, Rosalba. Um, that was beautiful. Any questions from the floor? We still have some time for um, the new earth circle. Any questions you'd like to put? Just unmute yourself before you speak. I'm not, I'm not very comfortable with English. I, I must okay. advise you. <laughs> I have to a, ask for a um, slow speaking. Um, I have to say, Rosa B, is it Rosal, Rosalba? Rosalba. Rosalba. Yeah. You did an amazing job. I understood your English very, very well. Thank you. And thank you <laughs> for your insight. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. You did very well. I heard you. I didn't just hear you. I felt you. <laughs> thank you. So thank coming you. across on an international language barrier, I think we have done a very good job. You, you sailed through that, definitely. I heard you. And what I'd like to know is, it, that poem you've just written is it's in Italian, isn't it? Um, sorry, <laughs> the poem that you've just read out, yes. is that devised in Italian? Yes, but uh, and you've uh, given it to us in English. Yes, 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 I translated in English. Yes, yes. Could you put that translation online on on the thread so that we can read it? Absolutely, yes. I think it'd be beautiful. Uh, yeah, later. Put um, it on chat. I've yeah. sent it to Thomas and I hope he spread my, my statement very, very, I'm very happy for this. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, I, I have the statement she read out and I will email it to everyone if I have your email, if with her permission. Um, yes. At the, at the bottom of the statement, there is also my email. So if you have some question, any question, you can write me and I'm, I've been more comfortable to answer you. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions for Rosalba? You have her in real time. Um, now's the time. I, I have a question, Rosalba. I, I'm a scholar. I work with texts. 
ancient religious texts. And if your order is claiming you have access to an ancient text, tell us more about this book. You, you, what's it called? Yes. Where did it come from? Uh, the text is uh, Tai Sar Imnai. That means uh, uh, the book of heaven and earth. And this uh, is a, it, it came uh, to Giancarlo Barbadoro through uh, mystery, very mysterious ways. Because as I told in the statement, he was uh, uh, contacted in a very, very, um, in, a, in a very, very age, uh, early age, uh, when he was uh, a, a boy. Hmm? Hmm. And he was contacted by a, a shaman, a, a shaman woman. And uh, he was, uh, uh, grow, grow up with uh, this uh, learning. And in, the, that, uh, in that way, he received also this precious book. Mm -hmm. And do you have a copy in Italian of the book? <laughs> I have a copy in Shana language. This, that is a very ancient language. Very language, uh, very ancient language, uh, uh, but we can say Gaelic language. Yes, ah. we have we have a copy. Yes. Have you translated it into Italian? Yes. Yes. You have it translated. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'd love to see a copy <laughs> to, to study it. How how big is it? How big? Why not? Why not? Okay. Yeah, I'd love to see a copy, the Italian <laughs> and the Gaelic. <laughs> yeah, and that would be wonderful. Mm. Thank you. Any other questions for Rosalba? As you've seen, I have some difficult to explain myself in English. <laughs> I have to study. <laughs> uh, but your Italian is, is good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My Italian, perhaps. <laughs> Okay, Utha, do you want to ask a question? You're near in Austria, you're close to Italy. Maybe you should get together. No, it's only very beautiful what I hear. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations to your wonderful work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. And, and Austria and Italy, you have a common border, no? Yes, yes. <laughs> No. So he was also thinking <laughs> to say come together <laughs> because we are on board. <laughs> I hope this pandemic turn. I hope this pandemic is uh, yes. Is very, it's very difficult now for this pandemic. Yes, yes, it is the problem. And in which place you are live in Italy? Turin, North Italy. Ah, Turin. Ah. Torino, see. Oh, this is not, not so far away. It's only three hours from us. No, not so far. Not so far. Yes, it's when not so far. It, when it is possible, we can meet. Okay. Yes, it, is, it would be very nice. And so you can see us. <laughs> and our Engli English words it will become together. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, no, wonderful. <laughs> and you're close to Slovenia as well. Um, we have a talk coming up from Marco from Slovenia. Do you want to ask them a question, sir? Ask Rosalba. Hi, Rosalba. Hi. Gre greetings from Ljubljana. From? From Ljubljana, I'm at ah. the moment. I'm I, at the moment. I'm in, in Ljubljana. Ljubljana, okay. In the in the, in the capital, you mm -hmm. see plain sunshine above us. <laughs> <laughs> but we just we just came from, we just came from mountains. We had a gathering yesterday, uh -huh. and we, we would like to greet greet your greet your speech, Thomas. Uh, when do you want me to speak uh, afterwards or? Yes, well, um, your talk is at 4.30 in French time. It's coming okay. up a bit later. So okay. if you have any questions to the Italian... Well, uh, we, are, uh, well we, are, we are operating uh, yearly on the Italian border in the uh, mm. historic city of Coberit, 
known for its role it played in the beginning of this century. So we would uh, most gladly invite you to, to our next event, uh, mm -hmm. which, will be, which will be more international than uh, until now when we had individual speakers only from abroad, including Thomas. That's where, uh, that's where he met our group. So for the future, we would like to, uh, we would like to work very closely with you and Uttar and, uh, and the group uh, on the further projects. Uh, we are now aligning with uh, the foundation, the Path for Peace, which is a, a strong foundation uh, mm -hmm. that keeps a memory on the First World War remainings um, on the front line between Italy and Slovenia. This affects directly Austria, Slovenia and Italy, as you all know, because of the historic facts. Mm -hmm. I recorded a stronger, uh, longer video for Uttar's meeting and uh, I suggest that uh, Uttar would share it with, with you because it explains, it explains uh, the reasons why we established uh, 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 one of the first public uh, shrines of pre-Christian faith and wisdom in Kabarit itself. Mm -hmm. So, but I will speak about that later. So, okay. I would very much like to have you uh, in our future international events uh, in Kabarit. Fantastic! Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But and my, my question, my question, my, my direct question for you. Moment, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Rosalba. <laughs> you want to ask a question to Rosalba? Go on. Hello, Mark. Yes, I, I have a question for Rosalba. Yes. Because, because we become uh, uh, your videos, Marco. Thank you. And thank you very much. And we would be very happy to, to um, show this video everybody in our meeting Congress. Thanks. Uh, sure, you're welcome. Yes. Um, look, uh, I, I would like to ask you uh, a question. Do you, did you ever visit uh, 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 Slovenian Italian Stonehenge <laughs> in the city of, <laughs> no. in, the, in, the, in the city of Bazovica on the borderline between Slovenia and Italy. It's on Italian side, a couple hundred meters oh, from yes. Slovenian border. Uh, no, it's, it's called Val. In Italian, it's called Val. In Italian, it's called Valle Bogomili. Valle? Are you, Valle no. Bogomili. I don't, uh, I don't know. I didn't know, and I didn't know this uh, place. But uh, well, I this is, will inform. Try to try to consult about that because I would like uh, to have a joint project with you on okay. rediscovering rediscovering the Valle Bogomili. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's in the city Bazovica near Trieste, on the borderline. Oh. Ah, okay. It's uh, it's an ancient uh, astronomic observatory. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it we call it Slovene Italian uh, Stonehenge. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. a beautiful it's a, it's a beautiful venue for for uh, events. Uh -huh. We have very intimate uh, events there because it's on Italian border and it's owned by an Italian who is not really interested in the historical value of it. Mm -hmm. There are diverse speculations on what is the true historic background and what is the exact age of the first appearance of it. But it is uh, for sure that Bogomil the culture uh, accessed that valley and did use it for worship. So that's something that I would really like to inquire with you in, in future. And uh, it, it's open to the public, this uh, venue? Well, uh, it is, it is uh, open it is in in the gardens uh, which are under private property but it's 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 open ah. Ah, okay it's it is on the map it is on google finds it vale okay. bogomili bazovica <laughs> okay okay i i will inform and uh, but uh, according to my knowledge this is this is the most powerful amphitheater place arena Mm -hmm. uh, on the borderline between Slovenia and Italy. 
which kind of uh, event do you think to, to do in that place? Which kind? Uh, first of all, I will, uh, I, I'm planning to organize uh, a scientific symposia on this, on this place and on the history of bogomils in this region. Uh, because bogomils were uh, Qatar. Ah, okay. It could be nice to, uh, to do also music and poetry, perhaps. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I wanted to continue. Uh, the, the, we always uh, uh, organize events, including, including the so-called so -called cultural uh, input. Huh? So, but but the, base, the base would be... Yep. Mm -hmm. And we can contribute, give our contribute with uh, the music. We have a, a music group, a Celtic group. Ah, very good. Okay. Very good. Right. Um, please, do, please, do, please do ask your, your colleagues about yeah. that place. Uh, I would really like to uh, create a project with you on this. Huh? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you, Rosalba, for your comments. And Thanks. if you have other points, maybe, Marco, you could put in the chat to all of okay. us um, okay. the name of this place, the Valley of the Bogomils. We can all research it. And for those that aren't familiar, I'm sure everyone on this call is familiar, but the Bogomils are the Balkan equivalent to the Cathars, the Gnostic Christians who carried on a more ancient form of Christianity and had links to the Druid traditions. Um, so and believe in reincarnation, all this kind of thing. So the Bogomils are very interesting. Um, and uh, Marco has been researching them. Anyway, Marco is going to give us a proper talk uh, a little later. Um, he has a half an hour slot. What we now have to do, if we move on, is have a little musical interlude. And it, this is a piece that was sent to me by a shaman um, musician who lives actually in Slovenia and is a very dear old friend of Marco. So I hope he'll, he'll listen. Everyone, um, I think she couldn't join us in person. I asked her to be online. But she told me that for the last month, she's been giving daily meditations of music because of COVID. And to, this weekend is her first weekend off. And they're going into the mountains away from the internet, no grid. So she said, please just have this instead. I'm going to play it very shortly. It's, um, this is a woman um, who has, she's, um, she's called Mira Omazel. I've heard her perform in Cobbery. She has a PhD in musicology. She spent a lifetime studying shamanic music. She's traveled in Siberia and met practicing shamans, also taken initiations on their journeying procedures, out-of-body stuff, but also learning their music and their chants, so that she's, and then she went to North America and did the same with the American Indian culture, and she was able to compare and contrast the shamanism of Siberia and Asia and North America, and then she explored the shamanism of Europe, and her own native Slavic roots, because she's Slovenian, she's a Slav. And of all the people I know on the planet who's, who's like a musical shaman, this is the one. So we're really fortunate to have this um, performance. I'm going to play it and share it, and I just hope that it works, okay? <laughs> um, and bear with me whilst I figure out how to do this. Right. Um, now, where are you? Oh dear. Film and TV, but that's not the right one. No. Hmm. Uh. Which is no. Right. Give me downloads then. Ah, could it be here? Right. 
approach. I hope this is going to work here. Yeah. File and then share screen. Right, that's what I'm doing here. Right. Sorry about the technical slowdown down here. Bear with me. So, sir, do you <clears> want <throat> me to say something about Mira in the meantime? <laughs> uh, no, I think we're nearly there. I've got blue dots going around the screen. It's looking good. Um, you say a little bit more about her then, Marco, whilst it works. All right. So uh, Mira has uh, her own uh, uh, music group, which is called Veduna. V-I-D-U-N. And this word means uh, in United Nations old Slavic language, uh, someone who knows, the knower, the one who is in the know. Uh, and as Thomas said, she's performing for more, more than 40 years. I played with, with her uh, literally 45 years ago. We started with the flute instruments and the wind instruments and, um, and string instruments. She herself is playing all kind of instruments and has an enormous collection of shaman uh, instruments at home. So her home is a museum of uh, instruments that she gathered from all around the place, from Siberia, from Tuva, Hakasia, to Hopi Indians in uh, Middle North America. So uh, she gathered high. He, she gathered high quality shaman instruments from indigenous uh, people themselves, and learned to um, play them all from the percussions, drums, uh, string instruments, wind instruments, and of course the voice. She's performing with her son now, Tina uh, Terlep Omerzel who is uh, roughly 30 years old and plays with her, with her from the childhood. They both master, master overtone singing and throat singing of Tuva Hakasya shamans. And um, uh, the production they have is uh, dozens of CDs. So you can always get some um, online on their homepage. So this would be Thomas, in addition to what you said. 